have made our way into the kitchen with our next guest. I'm so That's excited funny. to have him back here. <laughs> he is here to make his delicious brown butter pork chops with a romesco sauce. Brown butter pork chops. Oh, my goodness. Welcome back to our home. One of our very favorite people, Chef Ronnie Wu. Welcome back. I love Hi. being here. We love it when you're here. <laughs> It's I love such you guys. a good day when you're here. Well, thank you. It really it's is. a good day for me, too. Oh, we appreciate that. <laughs> Joining Cam at the counter is Paigey and Orly. You guys dig it's in. A good These day are for delicious us. pork yeah, chops. Yeah, right? So not only is pork chops delicious, they're good for you. They're also, they don't cost a lot of money to make. No. They were inspired by your dad, weren't they? They are. They they are and they were, yeah. My dad is like, my dad loves food and he like loves pork chops for some reason because they're kind of hearty. They're lean and you know, they're not that expensive, so what's there not to love about What's there not to love? But you make them fancy, <laughs> I, which is nice. Well, fancy, I try to make mm, them fancy. Fancier. And you say we should always get a pork chop with a bone in, why? I do, because I feel like it just provides so much more flavor, and most importantly, it gives you leeway when you're cooking it, so you can't overcook it that easily. It oh, buys you a few minutes, yeah. Okay. So the bone keeps it moist, surprisingly enough. All right, so we start with our, with our yeah, bone so in start, pork chop. I like the thick cut, just because it looks heartier. I'm gonna season it with some salt and some yeah, pepper. Yeah, I like a thick pork chop, it looks like more like a steak that way exactly and then when you're like cutting into it it's just like I don't know it just delicious? feels more yeah. Yeah. yeah were you gonna delicious say delicious because if so. I was gonna say delicious I overuse that word I think everything's delicious <laughs> well, I need to be a little bit delicious. more discerning when I say everything's delicious well, you make great stuff that's why and it's important to make sure that they're room temperature as well right exactly because that's gonna help the muscle relax a little bit so okay. when you cook it it doesn't seize up and squeeze out all that moisture and then it won't be juicy it exactly. won't be delicious it won't be speak. delicious that's so we start so over here yeah. with your brown butter and oil yeah we have some butter that's been browned and a little bit of oil and you want to get it nice and hot. That's been off the oil, so it's not So that's just sizzle. oil and butter? Oil and butter, yep. Oh my gosh, I'm listening to that, it starts to sizzle. It starts to sizzle. It should sizzle right away, but this has been... It's been off it's the heat been for a second. It's been off the heat for a second. So we want to cook that for about three or four minutes, get that nice and brown, and in the meantime, we're going to make our walnut romesco sauce. So for people at home who may not know what romesco sauce is, can you tell them? Yeah, so it's like a roasted red pepper, roasted red pepper sauce from Spain. It's a okay. Spanish sauce, and it's really hearty, it's really yummy, it's got a lot of brightness to it, it's got cheesy tones, and. There's nuts and in it. it's delicious. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah. There's that word again. Exactly. Okay. I'm just gonna use that word as many times <laughs> as possible. Okay. So we're gonna start with our roasted red bell peppers. Okay. It can be sort of just what you buy in a jar right. or make your own, but that's a lot of work. Okay. We have some apple cider vinegar. Just okay. Do you take extra brightness. the seeds out of the uh, red peppers? You can or you don't have to. Doesn't They're not. Matter. They don't really have a kick to them like jalapenos or something. They're pretty mild. So if you want to, you can, but you don't have to. Okay. Couple garlic cloves. Fresh. Fresh garlic cloves. Okay. Yep. Some red tomato paste, well, all tomato paste is red, you know. Just <laughs> but describe I love it. In case you couldn't paste. see it, it's red. So, <laughs> is there always tomato paste in romesco? There's, I generally, I, there's always a little bit of tomato paste in romesco, and I always add it, add it to a lot of things because it has a lot of tommy <laughs> and it's like really good flavor. Just add step. I think we've had this discussion before. Have we? That both of us, our secret ingredient for everything is tomato paste. If I could put it in cake, I probably would. <laughs> yeah, it just adds flavor really and does. color, and it's beautiful. We have some pecorino. If you don't have pecorino, you can do any hard cheese. You can do parmesan. Any Anything that you have on hand, really. This is one of those throw together dishes, throw together sauces that you can do just with what you have. Okay. Walnuts, brain healthy Ooh, food. Nice. Yeah, especially with like all the brain disease, I always put like walnuts in everything I possibly can. So good for you. Yeah, they're shaped like little brains too, which I, I don't know. know if it's appetizing or not, but <laughs> they're good for you. That's how you remember that they're good for you. But if you don't, if you're allergic to walnuts or allergic to uh, like nuts, you can omit them or you okay. can just add a different kind of nut if you're not allergic to other kind of nuts. All right, nice. Yeah, we're gonna add some oil. I use a pretty neutral flavored oil. Could you use an olive oil if you wanted? You can use olive oil if you want to, just make sure you don't heat it too high on the stove. Right, yep. okay, because we're gonna warm A little it bit up of water after. to loosen up, and we'll add more as needed. And then to thicken it up, which is basically what we're contrary, but it also adds body and a little bit more of that carby flavor. Okay, I love any sort of little. Any carbs, yeah, exactly. throwing a little carbs is actually really satisfying. There we go, we make sure we're locked. Blend it up. And if it's too thick, if it's too pour thick, some we'll water add some in there. More water. Does that look right? It does look right. Yeah, looks right. Yep. And then after you blend it all together, you put it back on the stove top to warm it up a little exactly. bit. Exactly. So we're gonna add it to a stove top and just get it nice and warm. That way you have a nice hearty sauce, and it also cooks out that garlic bite. Right. You which know, could how be raw garlic has bite. If you like it. You know, you can eat it raw, but I like to cook it out and it mellows it out and it just really adds that really it's yummy aroma. Super delicious. Mm. Oh, Thank super you. Super tasty. And now Thank it's about you. time to flip the pork chops on the other side. 
But then, so this is a, a two-part process. So you cook them on the stove top, but then yep. you put them Whoops. in the oven as well. Exactly. So. Oh my gosh, if, look at all that brown butter. If you have Woo. a heat proof uh, like uh, pan, just stick it straight into the oven. Okay. If you don't, just transfer it onto a baking sheet. All right. Pop it in. Pop it in. And how long does that go in? We're gonna cook it for about 10 to 15 minutes, but you know, it kind of depends on how you like your pork done. And it's, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually eat pork that is kind of undercooked. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of a mindset. We've all been conditioned because of, you know, trichinosis, which is right. a word I love. It's just a beautiful word, isn't it? <laughs> trichinosis, mmm, yum. So oh, It's not a delicious <laughs> word. <laughs> it's not. What you don't want. <laughs> but that's kind of outdated. No one really gets that anymore. So pork is pretty safe to eat undercooked. Um, but again, you just want to make, you want to push it, and if it feels like you're like a palm, like yep, that's palm right. finger, then it's pretty good. So, okay. so we have that. Now our romesco goes on top. Our romesco goes on top. Oh my gosh, look at that. You can oh, put it on top Ronnie, or you can serve it as a side. You make Doesn't anything look Ronnie, this is one of my special. favorite meals I've had here a really long time. Do. You know just what good. to say. Yeah. Yeah. Really you guys know just what to say. The flavors, everything about it, so fantastic. Thank you, and then you garnish it with some parsley. Just like that. You know, you guys have a salad to go with it. Yes, we did. But well, we did. Add rice. Yeah. As you guys anything. are having a little taste there, you mentioned your dad inspired this dish, you and did. I understand also that you and your dad have some great fishing memories Aww. together. We do. I've been fishing with dad ever since we we're like I was a wee little kid, or more Aww. than I can that remember. Um, wow. But yeah, we go fishing in Canada. I mean, this is really just to show that my dad's like a man's man. Wow. So he does like everything, like diving and everything. I mean, those and, fish like, were huge. Huge. Yeah. Don't mess around. We caught like a halibut that was the size of a human being. It was like 135. Pounds. It was Whoa. huge. Well, yeah. And now so, I get now I get why this is one of his favorite uh, meals. Yeah. <laughs>